God, the Creator Part 1 Muslim Glorification versus Christian and Infidel Falsehoods and Atheists' Denial Proof of the existence of God Almighty, His Oneness, His Supreme Attributes and Actions, and His Absolute Power Introduction All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, Creator of the Heavens and Earth, He who formed darknesses and light. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone, who has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, is his slave and messenger. O Allah, send peace, blessing, and honor upon the Prophet, Muhammad, seal of the prophets and messengers. O Allah, send peace, blessing, and honor upon his wives, the pure and elect members of his household, his noble companions, and those who carry out his instructions, walk in his footsteps and follow his example until the day of judgment. To proceed. We all stand in amazement at anyone who would dare defy Allah Almighty and deny his existence, who would compete with him and fight him, may he be glorified. By promoting false beliefs and corrupt philosophies, who would even go so far as to become a ruthless tyrant, torturing his people and leaving them to starve until they devour one another. Who drive young children to steal out of hunger, then round up millions to be put to death for the offense of acknowledging their creator, and force them to deny his existence. As happened in the former Soviet Union and other communist nations like it. If only that impudent denier would look within himself, he would know his weakness, humbleness, and his need for his creator and the blessings he bestows on him. Especially in his time of need and illness. We stand in amazement at anyone who would respond to such a person and welcome his lies and falsehoods. This could only be due to the sickness of his heart and mind, or out of rebellion and giving in to vain desires and trivial passions. In forgetfulness or heedlessness of his death the end of his life and the evil destiny he will face, the poor reckoning, the torment and regret for his failings before his God and Creator. We are even more amazed at anyone who would be presented with the truth Islam and the clear proof for it. Yet turn away from hearing and accepting it because his heart was crowded with his desires and pathetic whims and he was unprepared to receive the truth and accept it. To present an example, a country like North Korea, for we find that they accept nothing but communism. They do not acknowledge the existence of God the Creator, so it is not permitted for the call of truth Islam to reach its people. Therefore, it is necessary in fact, obligatory upon us to seek help from Allah, glorious and exalted, that we should strive harder and harder to call his slaves to worship only him. To believe in him and his oneness, his great being, and his beautiful attributes and perfections, free of any ascribed flaws or faults, as are leveled against him by those outside Islam, and in more general terms, this means to invite them to Islam. As such, this short paper will include crystal clear proof and incontrovertible evidence of many types for the existence of God, the creator of this universe, who made everything, and of the certainty of his oneness and the greatness of his attributes and actions. The attributes of God the Creator according to Muslims, the greatness of their glorification of Him and their denial of any imperfection in Him, may He be praised and exalted. The attributes of God the Creator according to non-Muslims Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians, Hindus, and others some of the defects, faults, imperfections and impairments they ascribe to Him and their refutation. Established scientific proof of the unrestricted power of Allah Almighty, whether or not the human mind can comprehend it. The necessity of belief in Allah's prophets and messengers as a requirement of belief in Allah Almighty and His glorious attributes and the perfection of His wisdom. The necessity of belief in other aspects of the unseen is a requirement of belief in Allah Almighty and of belief in His prophets and messengers. Unequivocal evidence that true guidance is in that with which the seal of the prophets and messengers came, as well as a selection of verses, Bu, from the Torah the Gospels and books of old which prophesied His coming. Indisputable proof that the Prophet's message, peace and blessing be upon him, is the final message, and that after the mission of Allah's Messenger, Muhammad. There will be no other Prophet or Messenger. The characteristics of the saved sect that they will stand true to that with which the Prophet Muhammad and his companions came. Incontrovertible evidence that the true religion, Islam, is the main factor in the spread of peace, economic prosperity and the advancement of civilization and that, in its absence, the opposite will exist. The wisdom of Allah, 
glorious and exalted, in creating both monotheistic Muslims and others who associate partners with him or deny him that he is not unjust to those he has placed in a non-Islamic environment. The rights of Allah Almighty over his slaves and their rights over him, blessed and exalted. Following which, this short paper shall conclude with a brief exhortation. 1. Physics and the Existence of the Creator, Al-Fiziad wa Wujud al khaliq by Dr. Jafar Sheikh Idris. 2. The Method of Argument and Debate in Settling Matters of Belief, Manhaj al jadal wal Munadbara fi Takrar al tikad by Dr. Uthman Ali Hassan. 3. The Challenge of Islam, Al-Islam Yadahada, by Wahiduddin Khan 4. And verily, you are of an exalted standard of character, wa anaka la ala kalujan adam, by Sheikh Safiya Rahman al Mubarak Furi. 5. The Jurisprudence of Worship, Fiq al Ibadat, by the great Sheikh Muhammad ibn Sali al Athamin. 6. Allah Most Beautiful Names Confirmed in Quran and Sunnah, Asma, Allah al Husna al Thabitab fil Kitab wal Sunnah, by Sheikh Mahmud Abdul Razak al Ridwani. 7. The Issue of Divinity in Religion, Qadiyat al Yulubiya wal Din, by Dr. Muhammad al Sayyid al Jalainid. I ask Allah Almighty, Lord of the Glorious Throne, to accept from us this and all our good deeds, and let them grow for us, may he be praised and exalted. Does this universe have a creator? On those who deny the existence of God the Creator. People in centuries past used to believe in the existence of God the Creator, and the world remained this way until about the 17th century CE, Common Era, after Christ. The first openly atheist book denying the existence of a divine being was published in Europe in 1770. We say, such people who deny the existence of Allah, glorious and exalted, have been seduced and have gone astray to follow their vain desires and trivial passions. For indeed, they have seen in Allah's great signs in nature and in themselves the order and precision of creation. They have seen that which proves his existence and the fact that he is the wise creator, in accordance with the saying of the Almighty. I will show them my signs in the heavens and on earth. I will show them my signs within souls so that it will become clear to them without any doubt that this Quran is the truth without any doubt. Is it not enough for these idolaters that the Quran is true by Allah's testimony that it is from Him? Who can be a greater witness than Allah? If they were seeking the truth they would have sufficed with the testimony of their Lord. Fushalat 41, 53 Yet, they prefer denial and disbelief, despite their certain knowledge of the existence of this great Creator, as in His saying. They disbelieved in these miracles and did not accept them, despite being convinced they are from Allah, due to their wrongdoing and their arrogance from the truth. So contemplate, O Messenger, how was the outcome of those who caused corruption on earth, due to their disbelief and disobedience, I destroyed them and eradicated all of them. al namal 27 14 This denial and disbelief is due to their arrogance and pride and the sway of their passions and desires over their minds and actions. They know perfectly well that if they believe in God, the Great Creator, they will have to submit to His power and authority and follow His prophets and messengers. They will have to seek judgment from none other than Him, glorious and exalted, as was sent down in His divine scriptures upon His prophets and messengers, and they will know that His law must prevail. And why not? For He is God, the Creator, to whom belongs everything in existence and to whom all things return. To Allah, glorious and exalted, belongs every decision, and all matters are referred to Him. It is Allah's right to order what He wills and to prohibit what He wills. For must not a subservient slave obey his master no matter what he commands, no matter how great the order or prohibition. For the slave has not the right to give orders, he is the property of his master. His master commands him to do what he wills and forbids him to do what he wills, however he pleases, whenever he pleases. This is but one example in reality, but to Allah, glorious and exalted, belongs the ultimate example, for there is nothing like unto him. It is from the mercy of Allah, glorious and exalted, His grace and bounty, that He does not order or require His slaves to do that which is beyond their normal human capacity.
even though he may command whatever he wills and forbid whatever he wills, for Allah, mighty and majestic, will not be asked about what he does. Rather it is he who will question his slaves about what they have done. It is he who will bring them to account on the day all creatures will be brought for judgment, in accordance with his saying. And Allah is alone in his kingdom and decree. Nobody can ask him what he has decreed and ordered, whilst he will ask his servants about their actions and will reward them accordingly. Al-Anbaya 21-23 It is from the mercy of Allah, glorious and exalted, and his great bounty that he created heaven, with its everlasting, permanent blessings, prepared for his good. Believing slaves who obeyed him during their lives in this world, followed his commands, and avoided his prohibitions, since their hearts, bodies and minds submitted to Allah, glorious and exalted. Due to his power and authority over them. It is from the mercy of Allah, glorious and exalted, that he has prescribed mercy for himself, and that his mercy precedes his wrath. For he, glorious and exalted, bears the right to forgive whomever he wills and to show mercy to whomever he wills among his slaves, as grace and bounty from him, blessed and exalted, to his slaves. For they are his believing servants. It is from the justice of Allah, glorious and sublime, that he created the hellfire, with all its humiliation and painful torment, as a permanent abode for those who defied him. Rejected his signs and denied his existence. Allah Almighty created the hellfire, with all its painful torment for those who disobeyed his commands and transgressed his limits and prohibitions, knowingly and voluntarily. These atheists who deny the existence of Allah, mighty and majestic, have preferred their present, impermanent lives over their everlasting destiny. They deceive themselves with speculative, presumptuous reasoning no one of sound nature could ever accept deductions without value or weight. They are no more than assumptions and baseless lies. Philosophers like these the proponents of logic and reason who deny the existence of God the Creator are not searching for the truth, but rather for means of rhetorical influence. They are not even able to agree upon a set of conditions for the evidence of their false claims, so they rush into denial and disbelief, following their passions, desires and worldly interests. Philosophical arguments have not been able to bring man to certainty when applied to questions of divinity since they are merely a collection of hypotheses, conjectures and baseless lies. Perhaps the clearest way to demonstrate that is. 1. Logic causes division, disagreement and feuding among its proponents and practitioners. 2. We find that physicians, mathematicians, writers and others make scientific and mechanical achievements without resorting to such philosophy and logic. Three. We find that such philosophy was the cause of its proponents and practitioners being held back, preventing them from engaging in civil society and the progress of science and civilization. Atheists and those who deny the existence of Allah, mighty and majestic, rely in their false claim, on philosophical ideas that have no relation to reality. Since they search in a world that has no external existence, its existence is only in the mind. They have submitted to logical premises they believe to be true, though they were not. We offer a simple comparison to demonstrate the extent to which their standards differ. If we look at a wall in which there is a defect, and one side says, according to his logic, that the defect is not in the thing made, but in the maker. Yet he does not take into account other factors that are not visible, but which could be the cause of this defect, besides the maker, such as humidity or the like. Would it be possible for us to say this about a person whose face is not beautiful, who Allah Almighty created in this shape for a reason only he understands? It would be as though we were saying the defect is not in the created, but in the Creator. Of course, this would not be possible. Allah forbid. Atheists and those who deny the existence of God the Creator use the methods of philosophy and logic to support their claims, despite their invalidity. Because of the ambiguity and riddle inherent therein, since no one understands them but an elect segment of society. At the same time, we find that the Holy Quran bases its arguments on the existence of God. For the sound human mind was created to believe in that which it can see and feel without complicated mental gymnastics which contradict the goal of guiding people and presenting clear evidence to them. We also find that, in proving the existence of God the Creator, the Holy Quran employs proof and testimony which no reasonable person could doubt.
it contains no complicated qualifications, and it works without disturbing the truth of its premises or conclusions within the laws of reason. On the ideas and claims of those who deny the existence of God the Creator and the invalidity of such claims. Atheists and those who deny the existence of God the Creator claim that religion is not real, that it is the manifestation of a natural instinct, and that everything that happens in the universe. From the earth to the heavens, follows laws known as the laws of nature. They say that in the beginning, there did exist a God who was the prime mover for this universe. Then, before long, he left it alone, it bearing no connection to him, and he bearing no connection to the things of this universe, whether living or non-living creatures. In this, their claims are like the polytheists of old who denied the resurrection after death for accounting and recompense, saying, indeed, it is merely wombs that push and earth that swallows. Then the leaders of atheism and the deniers of the existence of God offered a comparison in this regard. Voltaire said, the universe is like a watch, its maker sets his precise mechanism in a particular fashion and sets it in motion. Then, his connection with it is cut, as he claims. After him came those who even denied the existence of God in the beginning, whose pride and self-deception would not permit them to assert the existence of that God. Even if his role was merely at the beginning of creation. Then along came Hume, who bowed to his passions and desires and got rid of that, dead God, who no longer bore any connection to this universe following its inception. He said, We have seen watches and they are made in factories, but we have not seen the universe while it was being made. So how can we admit that it has a creator, according to his statement and claim? And so the statement prevailed and took hold of their minds which had previously been closed to the likes of such concepts these erroneous analogies and deceptive conjectures. They were blinded in heart and sight, in accordance with the saying of Allah Almighty. Did these people who reject what the Messenger, peace be upon him, brought not travel in the land, to see the remains of these destroyed cities? So that they would reflect with their minds to take heed and so that they would to accept their stories to learn from them? It is established that blindness is not blindness of eyesight, but rather the blindness which is destructive is blindness of insight, where such a person does not reflect or take lessons. Alhaj 2246 Alas, after the atheists' denial of divinity and religion, following their passions and desires. Their pride and self-deception took hold of them and there was nothing left but for them to reject anything with even the slightest connection to the issue of divinity and religion. They denied the sending of messengers, which of course meant that they denied the divine scriptures sent down upon them containing the commands, obligations, and religious directives. As well as the boundaries and prohibitions the heavenly instructions sent as guidance to mankind in addition to all accounts of the unseen this brought with it, past, present, or future. They denied the existence of angels and all other creatures that are beyond our powers of perception. They denied fate and predetermination and the fact that everything that happens in the universe, both seen and unseen, happens by the will and knowledge of Allah, glorious and exalted. And that all of it occurs in accordance with the pre-existing measure of Allah Almighty, according to a wisdom He alone comprehends. They denied this all and refused to believe in it. They denied the issue of resurrection, the reckoning, the recompense and everlasting life. Either in Allah's paradise, blessed and exalted is He, and its realm of delight and good pleasure for the virtuous believer. Or in Allah's fire, mighty and majestic is he, and its painful torment for the wicked disbeliever who did not believe in it all. They denied the existence of Allah's paradise, blessed and exalted is he, and the realm of bliss and contentment. They denied Allah's fire, mighty and majestic is he, and the realm of punishment and wrath. They did not believe in any of it. They are ever in a state of floundering and wandering in their lives which have been hurried for them since they have no religion or God to worship or draw near to. One might even be more specific and say. They have taken their passions and desires as their Lord, to worship beside Allah, glorious and sublime. Since they fall behind them in submissive following and due to their preference for this fleeting world over life everlasting. This confirms the saying of Allah Most High. Have you seen, O Messenger, the person who made his desire a god and followed it. Will you be a guardian over him to bring him back to faith and prevent him from disbelief?
Alfurcon 25:43. The following should clarify the aforementioned ideas and claims of those who deny the divine being. 1. The general concept amongst atheists and those who deny God assumes that there is no reality beyond the material and that facts can only be material. 2. That the universe is self sufficient, not in need of any external cause. 3. That matter in itself is eternal, and that it came together by mere accident, taking the shapes of which the entire world has formed, including life and consciousness. 4. They say that it is imperative to rely on the natural sciences in leaming facts, not on religion. In response to such false claims and invalid suppositions, we would like to say first of all that Allah, glorious and exalted, has provided the Islamic nation with brilliant minds among the scholars of the Sunnah who have corrected, through logical argument and scriptural reference, the spuriousness of the statements and claims made by atheists. Among the refutations which demonstrate the poverty and invalidity of the ideas and claims of atheists and deniers of the existence of God are 1. Nature is but one of the parts of the universe, it is not an explanation for it. Religion explains to us the causes and the true impetus behind the creation of this universe. The scientific discoveries being made in the natural sciences are merely about the external structure of the universe. Modern science provides details about what happens, but these are not the explanation for this reality. We offer the following as an example. Ancient man knew that rain falls from the sky, and he used to attribute that to Allah, glorious and exalted, that he is the one who enabled and permitted the rain to pour forth. For everything that happens in the universe happens according to his will. Today we know that this is the result of the evaporation of ocean water, followed by precipitation which falls to the earth. All of these events are the forms of reality. But does that mean that science has revealed to us how these events became law? How did these laws between the earth and the heavens come to be established in this amazing way so that scientists could deduce from them scientific laws? Of course, it does not mean that. Man does not discover anything but the order of nature. If man were to claim that his discovery of order in nature should be considered the discovery of the explanation for this universe, he would only be fooling himself. Indeed, it becomes our duty, after witnessing these events, to believe that the one behind the ancient order in this vast universe is a great divine creator. The Challenge of Islam, Al-Islam Yadahada, by Wahiduddin Khan Another Example The universe in its present condition is nothing more than a machine which spins under its cover. We do not know anything about it except that it spins. Yet, if we open its cover, we would see how this machine is joined by many different discs and gears, spinning one with the other. We would see every single movement. Does this mean that we have learned about the creator of this machine merely by watching the parts spin inside it? Of course, not. Could it truly be understood logically that watching things spin inside a machine could prove that the machine came into being on its own? Or that it operates on its own, Ibid? Of course, not. No reasonable person would ever say that, it could only come from the mouth of a denier, a rejecter. So how could it be proven, after watching a few cosmological events, that this came about spontaneously that it was self-generating? For if these scientific discoveries about the universe increased a million or more times than what we have today, this would be nothing more than a witness to particular cosmological events. It would not be proof of his bringing forth or leaving the universe to run on its own. On the contrary, all of this should propel us towards belief in the Lord of this universe, its creator who fashioned it with such precise order. Nothing of the sort could ever have come into being accidentally, as the liars claim. 2. The universe is not self-sufficient and not in need of anything external because it has been confirmed for us, through logical argument and scriptural reference from the prophets. Messengers and divine scriptures that the universe has a supreme creator, with attributes essentially dissimilar to those of his creation. 3. As mentioned before, it is impossible for matter to be eternal or that it could have come together purely by accident to take the forms in which our world now exists. Including both life and consciousness. 4. The senses are not a means of knowing all that mankind needs to know. 
There is no contradiction between relying on the senses to learn about one thing which can be known in that way and relying on logic to learn another thing which cannot be known except in that way. There is nothing opposite about science and religion, in fact, religion recognizes the scientific method as a means to knowledge, it merely asserts that it is not the means of knowing everything. There are types of knowledge which can only be known through narration, others that can only be known through logical deduction, and still others that cannot be reached except through prophets. Messengers and Divine Scriptures A reasonable man takes advantage of all of these methods, according to the type of knowledge he is seeking. 